Hello and welcome to this Price a Job tutorial. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to estimate a raft foundation. To access the raft foundation module, we can go to the foundations category here in the module toolbar and open the foundation submenu to select raft foundation. Or if we already have a foundation folder open, we can expand the foundation folder and simply add a new module. And then from here, we can select raft foundation. And this opens the Raft Foundation module. Let's expand the sketch pane to get a closer look. A Raft Foundation is often used where soil is weak to more evenly distribute the weight of the building. It's comprised of a slab foundation in the center with edge thickening beams around the perimeter to support heavy walls. Sometimes, in addition to the perimeter beam, there are middle ridges including internal lengths and widths to support the weight of columns. Price job allows you to estimate both perimeter thickening beams as well as internal beams. Here in the main stage, we can select the number of internal lengths, currently set as none, to either one internal length, two, or three, and likewise with internal widths. We can select none, one, two, or three. For our example, we'll set two internal lengths and one internal width. Then we should specify the type of thickening beam. A standard beam is a thickening beam along the edge. Alternatively, you can also choose a beam and boot, which adds to the thickening beam an extended footer, and this can be used in conjunction with cavity walls to conceal the concrete facing. For example, with a standard beam, perhaps the facing of this concrete would be exposed above soil level. With a beam and boot, you can drop this down lower and build your outer brick skin on the boot and your inner skin on the slab. Or you can also select a setting for slab foundation only. And this would be used in rarer instances where the structural calculations allow. Like for example, perhaps a garden shed. Let's take a look at the thickening beam edge foundation. Be sure to set any internal lengths that you require, as shown in this overhead view. Here's one length and two widths, and this is selected here in the main stage. We can adjust these both to none if required, but for this example, we'll stick with two lengths and a width. Next, we have to set our total foundation length. In this case, set at six meters. And notice when we select the length dimension, indicator arrows appear on the sketch pane to indicate the dimension of the measurement. Then we can select the foundation width and our indicator arrows show us this dimension. Then we can set our beam depth and this is indicated here, and our beam width, and the indicators show the width. And then there's the slab thickness, and you can see this here. This is the thickness of the center slab area between the beams. Next, we have a variety of stages that we can modify. Let's reduce our sketch pane so we can have a closer look at our estimate and description. Under the excavation stage, we can see that 10.4 cubic meters needs to be excavated, assuming an excavation depth of 650 millimeters, and we can adjust this as necessary. To perform the excavation, we can either do this by hand or with a machine. If we select the machine, a drop-down menu appears with a selection of machines in the Price of Job library. We'll stick with a 1.5 ton excavator. Under the settings cog, we can adjust the machine's productivity in cubic meters per hour, delivery and collection cost, and fuel consumption per hour. By consulting the excavation stage here in the estimation pane, we can toggle between hand excavation to take note of the price, 1100 pounds, versus machine excavation. So in this case, we'll stick with the machine excavation. Next, let's take a look at the hardcore fill. I can drag the bottom of our sketch pane down to increase its size while still sharing space with the other three panes. The hardcore fill is applied after the excavation, and this will depend on your specifications. If we were to remove this stage, we would see the sketch pane automatically update to indicate the missing hardcore. So we'll be sure to include this. And Pressedrop has calculated the volume of hardcore fill to be 2.7 cubic meters. And this is assuming a thickness of 150 millimeters. If we were to adjust the thickness of the hardcore, say to 180, our cubic volume would increase automatically. Then we can select the type of hardcore fill we can choose either crushed concrete or MOT type 1. Under the settings cog, 
we can adjust the hot core ratio in kilograms per cubic meter. Next is the sand blinding. If we toggle this, we can see it on the sketch pane. And currently the blinding thickness is set at 50 millimeters. We can set this to 60 millimeters. And we can see that the cubic volume of our sand blinding changes to 1.08 cubic meters. If we select the cog settings, we can adjust the sand ratio in kilograms per cubic meter. The next stage is for the beam links. And the beams are made up of rebar and a series of links. And Pricetop has calculated that we'll require 82 links to complete our beam run. From the drop down menu, we can adjust the size of the links. And this would be according to your structural calculations. And we can also set the beam links spacing, currently set at 300 millimeters. From the next drop down, we can select the tying wire, either a 2 kilogram coil or 15 kilogram 100 meter coil. If we'd like to add a material to this list, we can select Edit Pack to open the Price of Job Materials library and then click Add Material. Give our new material a title, a unit, a price, category, and link, and then save. And under the Links Settings cog, we can adjust the wire ratio. Next, we'll take a look at the formwork stage. And by toggling this, we can see the formwork in the sketch. And depending on your ground conditions, you may not require formwork, but we'll leave it selected here. And then we can choose the width of the shuttering plywood, either 9mm, 12, or 18, and select the size of the timber, 47 by 50 millimeters, 47 by 75, 47 by 95, or 75 by 75. Next is the reinforcement stage. So again, by toggling this stage, we can highlight this on our sketch. And we can see that this is the main reinforcement beams. And let's expand our sketch for a closer look. So we have the option of specifying either a single layer of reinforcement or a double layer. And then we can select the size, either A142, A193, A252, A393, or a custom size. And this gives us the price of job library in a drop down menu where we can select a variety of different types of A or B category mesh. We'll select A393. Price job has calculated the amount of reinforcement mesh will require at 36 square meters. Here under the cog settings, we can adjust the percentage of overlap. If there were to be any overlap here, say 10%, then this would adjust the total amount of reinforcement mesh required. We'll leave our overlap at 0%. Then we can select either single chair spaces or continuous rebar, and set the spacing in millimeters for this. And then we could select the number of reinforcements in each beam, either four, six, or eight. And we could also select the diameter of the reinforcement steel bars, in this case, 20 millimeters. Now, if instead of a standard thickened beam type here, instead we had a beam and boot style raft, then our reinforcement stage would have a couple of extra options here for the boot reinforcement. So we can set the number of reinforcement bars in the boot to either two or one. We'll leave it set at two. And then we can select the boot rebar. And this does not necessarily have to be the same diameter as the main beam. It really depends on the specifications. But because it has such a large effect on pricing, you'll probably want to use a smaller diameter if possible. Notice that this one stage alone for reinforcement bars is 5,500 pounds, which makes up approximately half of the value of our raft foundation. So it's prudent to adhere closely to the specified requirements here. The next stage is disposal of soil. And there's 15.9 cubic meters of soil to be disposed of. And if we compare that to the excavation amount, which was only 13, we can see that the difference is due to the soil expansion. And we can click the cog settings here to see the soil expansion rate is set at 22%. We have options to load the soil by either machine or by hand. And we can expand our estimate pane to get a closer look at how these methods compare. So let's find our disposal of soil stage is here. So currently to dispose of soil by hand is 1100 pounds. This is approximately 12 hours of labor. Alternatively, we can set this to dispose of the soil by machine, and we can see that the price difference is not significant. In either case, Price Job has calculated the number and size of skips required to remove this volume of soil, 
in this case, 2.6 80 odd skips. If we'd like to change the size of the skip, we could do so by selecting the drop down menu. And these 2.6 skips will be combined with our various other modules so that none of our skips are leaving half empty. However, if this is the only module that you'll have that will require skips, you can simply click the plus button to round this up to the next nearest whole number. Next, we have the concrete stage, and we have the option to either provide ready mix, mix on site, or concrete pump. Usually for a raft foundation, a ready mix is preferred to ensure a good mix, and we can select the mix here from either C15, C20, C25, C30, C35, C40, or C45. Usually for a raft foundation, C35 or C40 would be appropriate. It depends on the structural calculations. Under the COG settings, we can make adjustments for the minimum concrete load and part load charge. If we were to mix on site, we could select our ratio, or a custom ratio, where we can set the cement ratio against ballast. Or, with a concrete pump, we can select our mix, and under the COG settings, we can also adjust the productivity of the pump in cubic meters per day. Now we may have various areas that require a raft foundation, so to title this one we could just go to the top and select the title and input our new title. In this case, Rear Extension Raft Foundation. And this title gets updated in our folder. And you can see that in just a few clicks that the estimate shows a huge amount of detailed calculations for all materials and labor. Raft foundations are complex, with rebar, links, hardcore, sand blinding, concrete. In the old days, this would take a lot of time, but Price a Job easily performs half a day's work in just a few minutes. Not only are all these stages accurately calculated, but they're also concisely described with well-written descriptions here in the description pane. And all of these descriptions transfer directly to the Reports tab, here in your quote. The customer receives all necessary information and answers to the questions in advance to know exactly what you're doing. The customer could just look at this and tell for the rear extension raft foundation that you'll be excavating by machine, leveling and compacting with a vibrating plate. You'll be using a one and a half ton excavator and backfilling with hardcore and compacted with a vibrating plate, and then adding sand blinding leveled over the hardcore, also compacted with the vibrating plate, erection and removal of formwork, adding mesh reinforcement to the slab, Disposal of excavated material off-site using three 8-yard skips and a 1-ton skip loader. Ready mixed concrete and a concrete pump. This level of detail avoids confusion and enhances your credibility. The quote is completely customizable. You can show various levels of detail in pricing and structure it with either simple or advanced details. With advanced, you can conceal the descriptions or the materials or the labor, plant and tool or other costs. Or you can conceal the pricing to just show a table of quantities, or you can conceal the units. Most customers seem to appreciate the simple quote. You can add various disclaimers to the bottom of the project notes just by clicking the plus and selecting pre-written disclaimers from the Price a Job library. You can change the bullets to a variety of different formats, and when you're done, you can print the quote export it as a PDF, export it as a Word document, or email it to the client directly from within Price a Job. And that is how to use the Raft Foundation module. Thank you for using Price a Job.